Hi everyone, it's Nectarvia again with Sophistication. Today I am sharing with you a goat milk soap that I made and I used my recipe that does not involve coconut oil because I have some uh, friends and customers who are allergic or have sensitivities to coconut oil. Now this soap is fine for everybody and in fact I have many customers who are not allergic to coconut oil who actually uh, like to use it. Um, but this is this is kind of a special recipe that I created for that. And the only thing I will note if you um, are interested in something like that, I do use the same exact tools and containers and things like that uh, as um, my coconut oil soaps. And so, you know, there is always a chance of some trace coconut oil uh, within the soap just because, um, you know, my studio has that in there. Today's soap is my black raspberry and vanilla soap. And oh my gosh, I love this fragrance. So I got this fragrance in a small little bottle. <laughs> And I loved it so much. I went back to the, my supplier and was like, give me a big bottle. Uh, and they were, they were actually backordered. They were redoing the scent. And, you know, I think I waited like three or four months at least to get it, but it was so worth it. The soap is actually almost sold out. I think I only have like three left and I'm going to make some more because who doesn't like black raspberry and vanilla? Okay. There's probably people out there who don't, but I like it. So I'm making some more. Anyway, come on in. And I'll show you how I made this goat milk soap. To make this soap, I'm replacing the water that I usually use to make my lye solution with organic goat milk. Now the sugars in the milk run the risk of actually scorching the goat milk. So what you wanna do first is freeze your goat milk and then slowly add the lye, stirring it in before you add the next kind of spoonful of lye. I also keep an ice bath available so that if the solution starts to warm up too much, I can keep it from go getting too hot and scorching. Once this, all the lye has been stirred into the uh, milk, I set it aside to continue to cool down if it's needed, um, although I keep mine fairly cool, and prepare all the rest of my ingredients of the soap. You may know from watching my other videos that I like to disperse my colorants before adding them to my soap batter so that I don't have to stick blend my soap batter any more than I want to. You'll see later that I actually ended up needing to stick blend some color in because these just weren't bright enough for me. And you'll see that the soap batter actually thickened up more than I personally would have liked. And here you'll see I add some charcoal in this and I wish I didn't, but it all works out in the end. I add my lye solution through a strainer because that goat milk thickens up um, the solution and I just don't know if there's any lye bits that didn't get dissolved so the strainer helps me figure that out and make sure that I don't add that to my soap if there are any. And then I just make my soap as usual. You can see here the colors just aren't bright enough and especially that purple, ugh. So we're just adding some neon colors into these uh, to brighten them up. Because I had so little purple in this container, I couldn't actually stick blend it in. I have a mini mixer here, but I should have dispersed it separately before adding it to the purple.
Now, because I stick blended that neon into this, it's thicker than I wanted and is not actually penetrating the soap as much as I would like. So you can see, I hope that I, I try to kind of bring the picture up to try and, and, and get a little bit more um, breakthrough by these colors. Thank you. 